So number eight then from this new higher specimen paper number one. We've got functions of a function. Here are two functions here. It says defined in the set of real numbers. That won't affect you really doing the calculation. Find an expression for h of x. Well, it actually tells you what you're aiming for, but you would just start off as if you didn't know. So what does this say? g is going to act on, it's a function of a function, it's going to act on f of x. So what you're going to feed it, I'm going to feed it this. 1 minus a half x. What does g do to anything it gets hold of? It takes it, it squares it. So it'll take that 1 minus a half x and it will square it multiplies it by 8 and takes away 3. Now you're maybe used to just leaving it like that, but not in this case. You have to finish that off properly. So I'll multiply that out. So that's the square of a bracket, so it's square the first. Square the last, negative becomes positive. A half squared is a quarter. Twice the product, well the product is negative. A half x, so doubling that. Back to just x. Minus 3. Multiply it out, 8 minus 8x, a quarter of 8 is 2, plus 2x squared minus 3. Rearrange it into that well-known phrase they're saying they were aiming for, which is, in order, 2x squared minus 8x, 8 minus 3 is 5, and there you go. Now, part B for another three marks, express it in the form of a completed square. Well, it's just x in the bracket, so take that 2 out. So it'll be two lots of x squared. Taking this out as a factor, we'll luckily leave that as a nice even number 4. But I'm not going to... You may well do it, but I'm going to leave that 5 outside because I can see the, one, the remaining number outside of the bracket. I've left space for a little gap here, though, because what I'm going to do is use the pattern for the square of a bracket again. Whatever goes in this bracket should produce this one. So square the first produces x squared, so that must be an x. Square the last produces this, don't know it. But twice the product produces this, so it must be a negative. And if you're doubling it to make a 4, that must be a 2. Now we can say square the last will make a plus 4. But that was extra, that was added on. So to balance it, I'll have to take it away, but I had two of them. So I'll be taking away 8 altogether to remove that extra 4 that it took to complete that square. So I've got 5, take away 8, which is minus 3. But you may have noticed that when you did g of f of x to begin with, you got this expression. Before that was expanded, it was in the form of 8 times 1 minus a half x squared minus 3. That was almost the form of a completed square. The only problem was this bit inside didn't look like x plus a number. But you can do that if you factorise this. Now, normally you would look at something like 1 minus a half x and think, no, there's nothing there. There's nothing I can factorise. But you can factorise expressions. Again, this is something you do later on. You can factorise expressions that's full of the nasties, full of negatives and fractions, by drawing out the negatives and the fractions to leave the bracket with nice numbers. So what you can do here is take out a negative as a common factor and take out a half as a common factor. And if you did that, you'd be left with, well, that would just turn into x, but that would have to become a minus 2, which means that I could just take this expression because it's almost there. I just need to tidy up this bracket and say, well, that's 8 times. And if I'm squaring that bracket, I'll be squaring this. So it's 8 times that factor that you took out, that would have to be squared, and the, whoops, x minus 2, that'll have to be squared. So all I did was take out a factor of negative a half, but it was in the bracket, so when it comes out, it'll be squared. Negative a half squared is a quarter. A quarter of 8 is 2, so it's 2 times x minus 2 squared minus 3. That's a wee bitty more sophisticated. Now, part C, for one mark, heads or otherwise state the coordinates of the turning point on the graph of this. Well, there I've got h of x in the two forms, the expanded form and the completed squared form. That's a handy one for the turning point, because there's the turning point there. The turning point must be, let's call it tp, well, the value of the function, which is the y-coordinate, 
will get to negative 3 when the bracket comes to 0. If you put anything else into this bracket apart from 0, it's going to lift it up because it's a squaring. So when is this bracket equal to 0? When x is the opposite of that, so when x is 2. So there's your turning point. Now you could get it by differentiating this. It would just be a wee bit longer, wouldn't it? You could say, well, if y equals 2x squared minus 8x plus 5, then dy by dx would be 4x minus 8. The stationary point would be when dy by dx equals 0. So 4x minus 8 equals 0. So 4x equals 8. So x equals 2. And then putting 2 back into that would give you the negative 3. Far too long. In this form here, you can spot it straight away by inspection. Now, last part, part D. So that's quite a few. There's nine marks for this question. Sketch the graph of y equals h of x plus 3, showing clearly the important features like the turning point and any intersection with the axis. No, that's not. This is h of x that's got this turning point. This is going 3 up. So you can either rearrange the equation or just realise it's going 3 up. So instead of having a turning point at 2, negative 3, lifting it 3 up will make the turning point here. So this graph's going to come down, turn there, and go back up. I'll just put this point in explicitly. That's the point 2, 0. Now the marks go, one for having the correct shape, that's realising that it's a parabola sitting the correct way round, if you like, heading up positively. And the other marks for getting the numbers in. So that's this point, because it was lifted up three. Now what about where it cuts? Well, and it doesn't particularly ask for the working here, but well, you could put it down. This one here is perfect for giving me the turning point. This one's perfect for telling me where the y-intercept is, because when x is zero, it'll be a five. If it's lifted up three, that must actually have been at eight. So that would be the point zero, eight. Those are the two points that have to be shown in the diagram for the second mark.